Are you ready for another Grain to Glass video? Today it's all about Kölsch again. Yes, I actually traveled to Cologne two summers ago and tasted all the Kölsch I could get my hands on from the Brau, Brauri pubs, from the brew pubs at Cologne. And actually a Kölsch can't be brewed outside of Cologne, but yeah, so this but you can call it a Kölsch style beer, I guess. And I did take some brewing footage of it, which I can use for like epic B-roll. And uh, we're gonna go through the recipe. And of course, we need to bitch about other people brewing Kölsch. Yeah, sorry, but yeah, let's get into that. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. So if you want to learn with me about beer and how to become better at brewing, consider becoming a subscriber. I do green to glass videos like this one, I do gear reviews, beer reviews and stupid ass experiments to learn more. So if that sounds like your thing, subscribe. So let's pour beer in the Stange. I actually bought this Stange at uh, Cologne. Uh, I'm gonna put a link down below to that video. So we're gonna run through the recipe, taste the beer, and yeah, look at some epic B-roll footage. And yes, as promised, bitch about other people brewing Kölsches. Okay, so here you have the, the beer. It's a well carbonated, straw colored beer. I think you see it quite good there. It's not crystal clear, but it's very clear. It has been sitting for uh, like three weeks now. This has also to do with this recipe, but it's clearing nicely. I haven't cleared this with like gelatin or something like that. I did though use some Protaflock, which is against the rules, of course, for uh, the German purity laws, the Reinheitsgebot. I'm not in Germany and uh, I can't even brew a Kölsch as it can only be brewed in the city of Cologne. So, I see it, but yeah, you don't need to use Putaflock either. And um, I did use some yeast nutrient. I'm, I'm already getting into the recipe, but if you want to brew Reinheitsgebot, you could add some, uh, some yeast to the boil instead. That would work also as yeast nutrient, as the yeast is our cannibals. So it's a good looking beer. And uh, uh, the, the, the glass is called a stange. Maybe I mentioned that before, I will link down below. And it's very important to serve Kölsch in a stange. It's always served in this 20 centiliter, two deciliter glass. Go and check out my travel video to Cologne. Cheers. I will have to refill this during the video, but that's what it's all about. A small glass and they just keep on coming until you put your, I don't have a coaster here, until you put a coaster on top uh, and then you have to pay up. If you have the means after this hectic life we're living right now is over, I would recommend you go to Cologne. Yeah, I had a really nice time there. So yeah, it's a hectic time, but I'm hoping that maybe my videos can be a uh, positive distraction in all of this. Also want to uh, give a shout out to Brewgoat, today's sponsor. Thank you, I'm gonna talk about them a little bit. And as always, a big shout out to my patrons. Love you guys, thank you so much for your support. Don't pick at my pin code. Don't know how many times I have to say that. So here we have the recipe. So this com beer comes in at 4.9% ABV. So this is for 23 liters. I weighed up 3.7 kilos of Pilsner malt. That's 88.1%. I use 500 grams of wheat malt. That's 11.9% crushed that up and mashed in at 63C. I think I mashed for about 90 minutes. I wanted to get a good alternation of this beer. I did a mash out at 76C. 
hops wise I only had one edition of hops I'm going to talk about that and I'm also going to talk about uh, something I learned about the 60 minute edition which yeah kind of blew my mind cheers I need a refill soon what are you drinking comment down below okay so hops I used my own Halletan Mittelfru, quite special hop, I'm going to talk about that. I used 55 grams of Halletan Mittelfru, and of course I don't know the actual alpha acid of my own hops, but yeah, um, I did like a middle earth, so I'm guessing it would be like 4% maybe. So I used 55 grams at 60 minutes, and uh, the only thing after that was that I added some uh, protaflock and yeast nutrient. If you want, like I said earlier, if you want to stick to the uh, Reinheitsgebot, the German purity laws, you can't add anything like that to the boil, but for yeast nutrient, you could add some old yeast. A big shout out to today's sponsor, Brugot. Brugot is the Swedish kind homebrew supplier who goes that extra mile for every customers so go and check them out online or go and visit them in their brand new store at Roslagstoppet just outside of Stockholm and yeah it's a big space outside so you will be safe <coughs> and uh, this was a no shield beer I just put out a no shield video with this beer in it also actually so you can go and check that out. It's all about no shield. I usually don't take my hops out, but as I want a good seal, when I seal it with food wrap and put the lid on for it to cool down until next morning, I did take it out. But yeah, it's not, like I said in that video, it's not gonna be a massive difference if you do that or not. It's a 60 minute edition. And also the hops are already inside of the wort, so yeah, the hops oil, that is, sorry. So we have a nice fruity, it's not like a uh, yeah, fruit bomb, something like that, but it has a... Now I also get the hop, hops. The uh, next morning I heated up the, the water just a little because it was very, very cold and uh, yeah, transfer it straight into the Firmzilla rounder, which I'm testing. And uh, yeah, I oxygenated with pure oxygen, added the, the yeast. I fermented this with the Lallemand Köln yeast, two package of that. And um, as this was going under pressure, I started this as 18. If I hadn't fermented under pressure, I might have started it at about like 15 degrees Celsius. After a few days, I started ramping the temperature up. And uh, yeah, now it has been sitting actually outside in the uh, in my forest in the Swedish climate. So it's it's clearing up very nicely. But the, it, this has a lot of wheat in it, so of course it takes a little longer time than if I had just used Pilsen malt. Wheat malt has a lot of proteins in it, and um, yeah that makes beer hazy. But yeah, this is clearing up nicely. I need a refill. So I actually brewed a couple of Kölsch and uh, I've tasted a lot of Kölsch, as I said, when I were to Cologne. You gotta check out that video. I can't remember how many I tasted actually. Maybe 14, I, I don't know. Kölsch is a fragile beer. So this only has a 60 minute edition. Don't go overboard with your hops. Try this, just adding hops at 60 minutes to get the, the bitterness. And the interesting thing is, and I think I have been bring, brewing beers for a couple of years, and I think this is, might be the first time I only used a 60 minute edition and no other editions hop wise. I thought that all of the flavor would be gone actually, but they're not. My Halitza Mittelfru, which I'm looking at right now, of course it's uh, winter, but it's growing outside there. I can link down below to some hop 
growing playlist so you can check out my hopes the Halletau Mithu Fru. Um, the interesting thing is that my, my brother actually bought the Halletau Mithu Fru from, from Germany, but growing in my soil, it gives a interesting like um, herbal pepperness, spicy thing to it. And even with 60 minutes of boil, I'd still get that I still get that taste, not as much as if I would have used this as a late addition. But this is a very nice Kirsch. It's the best Kirsch I brewed so far. It's also the simplest one I brewed. Simplicity. A Kirsch is, like I said, a very fragile beer, and uh, the guidelines are quite strict. So you could just use Pils de Malt. And for hops, of course, you should use like a noble German hop. And but it's not supposed to be like super fruity, not supposed to be like super hoppy. It tastes more like a lager than an ale, but not yet again. And because, yeah, you can't have like the acetyl, like in Czech Pilsner or Asildehyde. So this is a good base recipe and you could add even more wheat, but of course it's going to be even more hazy. You could add like to like 15-20% wheat in a Kirsch or just do Pilsner. You could also do instead, instead of the wheat, add some maybe Munich malt. 10-15-20% of course they're going to make it darker. Maybe you could add like Vienna malt, you could play with that. But yeah, I think that's about it. You can't like add crystal malt or Carafa 3, something like that, or yeah. Of course you could add like acidulated malt for uh, pH adjusting, because you can't adjust a uh, Kirsch with lactic acid, something like that, if you want to brew according to the uh, German purity laws. After my first video when I went to Cologne, because there's so much um, confusing stuff about Kölsch outside the city of Cologne. I've seen Kölsch in the lager fridges over at brew store in London. And was this brew pub who actually said Kölsch lager. Kölsch ain't lager, Kölsch is an ale. There are two different kind of yeast strains in their lager and they are ale strains and Kölsch is an ale. I got some comments, not like in the description maybe, but uh, in some other videos, some shout outs, great. Uh, love to uh, hear my name, of course, that people are thinking about me. People were saying that, okay, I brew this Kölsch, maybe Dr. Hans wouldn't call it a Kölsch. Well, maybe I wouldn't call it a Kölsch if it's not a Kölsch. If it's not, <laughs> according to like the guidelines of what a Kölsch is, ingredients wise and what a Kölsch tastes like, it ain't a Kölsch. I didn't sign up to be the uh, freaking like Kölsch Nazi, but maybe I have to be because you can't brew a coconut milkshake strawberry Kölsch just because you're cross my f loof yeast bag says Kölsch. Kölsch is not a yeast. Kölsch is a beer style. It has to be according to that style to be a Kölsch. You can't brew a Kölsch with lager yeast because then it's not a Kölsch. You can brew a Kölsch with a yeast. It doesn't have to say like Kölsch on the package, but yet again, you can't brew it with a yeast that costs off a lot of banana or like spicy saison notes, horse blanket. Uh, uh, you could use use a five, yes, but uh, normally Kölsch is brewed uh, colder. And if you were, but I didn't brew this cold, so yeah. But if you were to use USO5, for example, at like 15 degrees, it would start to throw off some like peach esters and then it wouldn't be a Kölsch. But yeah, if you fermented USO5, maybe higher, it might be able to brew a Kölsch with that. I haven't tried it. Because if you're using an ale yeast, then it's all about the taste. Does it taste like a Kölsch? Then it's a Kölsch. Have the ingredients according to the style? Then it's a Kölsch. Of course, you can never be a Kölsch outside of Cologne, but yeah, you, you get it. Could use like uh, Kvike yeast, I guess. 
and uh, now I've lost all the, the quite strange names. You couldn't choose like the John Anderson, there's a shout out. Lil John, shout out. You couldn't choose like the John Anderson quike yeast, the apple bomb yeast, because yeah, it wouldn't be a Kölsch. You couldn't use like the, uh, the one that kicks off the orange, of course, but I'm guessing that maybe is some um, quike yeast fermented a little bit colder. Might be okay for Kölsch. And I'm not saying that you can't use the Cross My <laughs> Louf Kölsch yeast. I haven't tried it. Maybe it's awesome, but just because you're using a yeast that says Kölsch, your beer ain't gonna be a Kölsch. It's called it an ale or something. Strawberry Disco. Disco. This is the like best one I've tried so far of my own, sorry. I don't think the, uh, let's call it the sweetest spiciness that I get for hops are too style. I think this is a little bit too spicy. But if you were to use like bought Halletau Mitterfru hops instead, instead of my hops, this is a good recipe for Kölsch, I think. So do try it out. Do try this out before you're starting to add more hops, and if you're adding more hops, maybe not do it after the 30 minute mark. So there's a hectic world outside, but I'm hoping that uh, this video maybe are just a positive distraction to the reality. If you want even more content, there's my Patreon page check out there. I do like a vlog style, and uh, you get to dig into the big Dr. Hans recipe book, of course. Um, if you want some free recipes, sign up for my mailing list on my webpage and you'll get my free ebook. Nice. Three awesome, special, different, yeah, throw in more words there, recipes for you to try out at home. <sighs> yeah. So guys, take care, be smart, don't do stupid thing, and uh, Best wishes to you and your family. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Dog turns out.